morning today. Hi, how's it going everyone? Today I want to show you yet another angle, yet another kind of sub-cuisine, sub-culture of the city of Chiang Mai. This is where I live, this is my home, and I am having a blast being out, able to explore locally again. We still can't leave Chiang Mai province, but it's okay. As you've seen in the previous weeks of videos, we have been able to show all the diversity that just this single province of Northern Thailand has to offer. You can see a lot of activity. It doesn't mean that life is back to normal, but it does show you how busy, how bustling this street is pretty much 24 hours a day. This is the Chiang Mai Lumpun Road, locally the 106. You can see the huge trees. Some of them are more than 100 years old. They line the road all the way down to Lumpun, and if you're coming from that direction, they are basically leading you on the way to a serious amount of street food. That's why we're here today, and welcome today to Laila Chicken Biryani, Khao Mok Kai in Thai. Welcome to today's video. Get ready for some delicious halal food right here in Chiang Mai. Again, Laila Chicken Biryani. They have fried chicken. They have the common guy chicken. They have noodles, tons of different kinds of noodles. At first, I was gonna say these might be like Southern Thai dishes, but no, this is real, this is like real Muslim, like Middle East style. So here are some noodles, here are some rice dishes. I can see they have beef, they have goat, they have fish, they have shrimp. Wow, they have some curries. They have the khao soi, they have other types of noodle dishes. Soup hang wo doi, soup nea soup kai. Wow. This, we are gonna eat a lot of food. I'm just gonna tell you right now. I'm gonna order a ton of stuff. They have mataba also. This is great, okay. Okay, let's get to ordering. Mataba. So because this is a Muslim family, it's not as polite for me to just roll in with the video camera. Some ladies, some family members might not want to be on the camera. So that's why I came here to ask them if I could make a video. And you see the one auntie, she was excited. So I think, I think it's going to be awesome. And uh, uncle and grandpa, did you see the smiles when we came up? So yeah, sometimes the camera does make people nervous and I respect that. So yeah. I know we're still in for an awesome time today. I know that this family has a very unique story because just going from my own experience around Thailand, sometimes menus are made to be very easily recognizable. So when there are items on the menu that I've never even heard of before, I already have a special feeling and I already want to know the story behind it. But then when you come to the restaurant and you meet the family, you hear a language, an accent you don't understand. You see a setup that you, I mean, I've lived in Thailand for a long time, so I can just tell. This is very unique. And it's so cool that it's right here, right on a main street of Chiang Mai, because I can introduce it easily to you when you come to Thailand. If you're living in Chiang Mai, this is one of those places that might have been here for actually for decades, much longer than I've been here, right under your nose. So again, welcome today to Khao Mok Kai Lai La. We are gonna have a great time here today. Okay, I already ordered two dishes. I'm gonna need to write down all the rest. So, I need some, yeah. Oh, okay. 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 O
ครับขอบคุณมากครับยัสครับ See you later See you later Thank you Okay So he's so friendly I was He was asking me basically three separate things at the same time. Where am I from? Uh, which government do I support? And then um, how long have I been doing YouTube videos and what food do I usually make videos of? So, okay, let's, let, let's sit down, let's sit down. This is unreal. The smells coming off this table. I'm like, I'm so happy to be here. Okay. And yeah, meeting uncle, that was a great welcome. So it is one big family, and I got the, the information, right? So, so the uncle that I met, he is married to the lady who is the main chef, also the owner, so they are the owners. Uh, she is from Chiang Mai, so a Chiang Mai local Muslim family, and his family moved up from Ayutthaya. Actually, I think we've done a video in Konken with a Ayutthaya Muslim family cooking amazing halal food in Isan. So now we have another, wow, so people in Ayutthaya are famous for cooking. So I have here a lot of utensils. We've got a lot of dishes to eat. Let's, let's dig in. First we have, thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. <laughs> thank you. So this is one of the things on the menu, I didn't even know how to pronounce it, which was a treat, right? So I didn't even know what was coming. I only knew that it was made out of lentil or dal flour because I saw them making it raw. So, and it comes with a, dude, I don't even know what dipping sauce that is. We are gonna have fun right now. Check this out, we also got a giant plate of samosa. Look at that. Oh wow. Okay, we are blessed with some insanely tasty looking food today. I'm gonna give thanks and we are gonna get into our breakfast. Oh dear Lord, it is, it is a happy day. Thank you for the rain last night. You made the air so clear and clean driving here under all those clouds, just really feeling appreciative of the, the life that we have still each and every day. God, thank you for this food. Thank you for this family who made this amazing food. Thank you for them. Thank you for their culture and just the beauty in this very rich and diverse area. Bless us in Jesus' name. Wow, what a what a spread, just opening my eyes again, just, okay. It is very hard to even pick where to start. Some of these still have steam rising off of them. I know these are the Kaurat gang, so these are, are actually room temperature. These are made fresh. Uh, these are made super fresh because they made them just for us, so why not try this one? It comes with a side with a dip, but actually it's even made like that so you can stir it up yourself. See on the top, there are chilies, cilantro, green onions, peanuts, dry chilies, but then underneath, it's like cool, like a refreshing smell until you start to stir it. I can smell the peanuts and the chilies, of course. The... Wow, okay, so I'm mixing that up. So this is bagia. So in Kenya, I grew up having like my favorite snack, like french fries or whatever, is bajias, which are an Indian or Middle Eastern dish from potato. This is not potato, this is lentil flour. Oh man. The full mouth texture with that. So it's deep fried, so it's crispy on the outside. Inside, there are maybe cumin and cardamom and curry. It's yellow, probably from curry, but wow, also from the chickpea flour. That's ridiculous. It's very spicy too. Mm. <clears throat> Here's a better one so you can see inside. That is one of the best snacks I've had in a long time. It's even a little bit sour. It is a complete dish. 
very hearty too because the, the dal is, is pretty heavy. This dip is incredible too. It's cold, not just cool, it's cold. Tamarind, sour, really sour. But then you have the dried spice and then you have the peanuts for added richness. That is incredible, it's oily. Oh, it's incredible. That's straight up addictively good. <clears throat> surprisingly happily spicy. Mm. I can't stop. Wow, okay. So, we have a lot of finger foods on the table, so I'm gonna continue with that. Over here, this is called roti jimkang. So jim is to dip. Thai people eat roti as a dessert. It comes with a lot of sweetened condensed milk, maybe even bananas, jam, pineapple. It's like almost its own little dessert culture in Thailand. I am gonna go for uh, for the dal. Tried, tried and true around the world. Dal is one of the most just comforting flavors. Some deep fried shallots on top. It looks so creamy. Mm. 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 So flaky, but also very thick. I like that she didn't use too much oil. It's just really crispy. Wow. Mm. And the dal is really rich, like, like a light peanut butter. Dal is one of those dishes, it's like, you don't need any sweetness because when they put the, the caramelized onions, the shallots, sorry, shallots, the onions add a sweetness and it is just a perfect dish. Oh man, that's ridiculously tasty. Okay. Another one of these. Let's find another curry. How about the beef curry this time? This restaurant also has goat, but in times of COVID, when they're already kind of struggling to find customers, find business, they're not doing the goat because it's just, it's too hard for them to, to have that on the menu because it's so expensive. But we are going to enjoy this beef for sure. Ayutthaya Muslim style. Nice and runny, that beef curry. Oh, it looks so good, that color. All of these are just like rich and hearty flavors. I can just feel somehow I can taste through my fingers to begin with. <laughs> the wonderful, the very fibrous beef, the long cooked beef, because they will stew the beef first and then use it to make the curry. Mm. Again, none of the food is really spicy. Only this dip I'm expecting to have like chilies in it, so we can add some more chilies later. But mm. that is amazing. I'm gonna try it with some of the the biryani rice, that beef. Oh man! And biryanis all over the world. The base ingredients are different from country to country. I smell cardamom first and foremost. That sweet, really. Oh, I love that smell. These are my favorite flavors. Mm. The curry, the richness, the hands-on friendliness, there's some deep fried crispiness, and then just spices baked into every dish, fried into the dishes, steamed, just stewed. This beef, this beef curry is amazing. Mm. That beef is so rich, I think I need a palate cleanser. In this dip, actually it smells like fresh cucumbers. Maybe this is only, they made it this morning, so there's not a few green chilies. So just trying it like this, just again for fun, but also as a, as a palate cleanser. This roti is awesome, it's so thick that it holds up to dipping into a liquid. Sometimes uh, a thin roti would just kind of come apart, because this one is pretty flaky, but it's, it's also nice and thick. Mm -hmm. Sweet, refreshing. 
a little sour from the vinegar, a little sour actually from the chili because they're uh, young green chilies. Uh, they're breaking ice outside. Sorry for the noise. They're breaking ice. The way that ice is served to the to restaurants or businesses like this, a truck will bring a huge chunk of ice, and the cheapest one is one that you can you have to break up yourself. So they'll bring a. 20 kg chunk of ice and you have to pound it up yourself. Chicken skin, chicken fat. Oh yeah, because they have common guy on the menu also. Okay. Okay, next gotta try that shrimp. Again, just a pile of wonderfully aromatic deep fried shallots and garlic over here. And that shrimp. I have never had this dish in Thailand. This, yeah, it reminds me so much like of a dish you would have in the south, right? So I, I took the the back away. Let me cut that. Oh, another one of those bites you can just sense the richness. The shrimp are small, but the meat is so dense. It's so wonderfully chewy. Mm. Okay. I don't know if you noticed, I rarely order seafood or shrimp. I just love fish, but I rarely eat anything else. That shrimp is amazing. It's, there's like a candied sweetness, just a hint under a massive dose of oily, rich, delicious curry. Mm. Oh man. You can just eat the, the shell of that shrimp easily. Actually, it has a nice crunch to it. Oh my gosh. That's amazingly tasty. I love it in the background you have people breaking up the ice, which is just a very big city street food sound in Thailand. You have the fryer, she's making the matabak, the roti, she's hitting them by hand. Uh, you can hear some of the slaps from time to time. There's someone else cutting up some pineapple. And then if you notice next door is 7-Eleven, so there's the There you go. It's just ideal for a full-on street food atmosphere and delicious Thai street food experience just in one restaurant, and that's always what we are on the lookout for. That was like a round one. I guess that was your spoken intermission. Let's get directly into round two. Okay. So it's so cool, you see that? He gave the northern accent as well. He said, Kai Song Kiang, which would be northern Thai accent. So, I mean, it's awesome. They're making halal food authentic, halal recipes, but they are a northern Thai family too. So cool. I love them. Oh, I just went in hands first. Sorry. Over to the rice. <laughs> Bring it to your plate with the fingers and then use fork, use fork and spoon to cut it open. <laughs> I love the ambiguity of it all. Again, going with the biryani rice. Wow. You can see the pepper seeds in that. You can, it's definitely some, some more deep fried shallots and garlic. That caramelization, that sweetness under the rich herbal spice, that's, that is the combo for all of these curries. Mm. That's insane, Yelan. That is your dish. I should have known. The restaurant name is chicken, so they should specialize in chicken. It's ludicrous how much flavor there is in that. Expertly curry right there. Mm. Oh my gosh. Pause. I can't describe anything. Oh my gosh. How do they do that? You are going to love that. Oh man. Lemon sauce. 
<laughs> that sauce is really strong. You almost need like some white rice to mix in with that. Really, I will love this one. Yeah. Let me taste and see why I will love. Mm. It's very good. Very amazing. What the way they make it? I don't even know what that dish is. I think they rub with spices first and then fry it. I don't know the way they make them, but they make the chicken fries and take the beef fries. <laughs> yeah, this should be the chicken beef fries. This is very good. That's that's very cute and this funny, but that's fries. one of the best descriptions. Chicken is so good it can catch the beef. <laughs> they should raise the price of chicken, she mm -hmm. said. <laughs> They make chicken proud. Yeah. Nice. It does have that kind of, no, it's the, the big beans, the yellow, like we have it. Burmese and Indian, but this one is just so much more thick. You know, usually deep fry is the best. Yeah. Not for them. <laughs> Chicken is the best. Yeah, that thing is amazing. This one can be deep fried. Yeah, that's unbelievable how good, right? Oh, you gotta try the dip. Try the, the dip that came with it. Over here, last and not least, it is rare to find a samosa, like a proper, as I know, East African samosa. Look at that. So in Kenya, when I was growing up, like uh, allowance of a 14, 15 year old to spend on the weekend, I would be buying samosa or bajia and then going to watch a football match at the local bar. Not alcohol bar, but like a, yeah, just this was my weekend weekend happiness. I would spend my allowance on stuff like this all the time. So, oh, this is great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. Potato, immediately. Beef. The yellow curry. Again, that flavor profile is amazing. Wow, it's so, it's like richly sweet, but then so much curry. And the potato is nice and, and smooth too, just mushing nicely. You can see this is the one that they're making next to me. So it's awesome how thin the dough can be when you hand make it. And then they deep fry them before serving. And I think the special thing about samosa, the way that they make them so crispy, is because they double deep fry. Mm. Oh my gosh. Immediately need a second one. Let's try this. So this is the chili jam for cow soy. It's very oily and the oil carries all the chili heat. Let's see if these flavors combine well. <laughs> Needs to be some kind of chili around here. be a little too dry because remember that's like a noodle chili so they're putting it into soup so it might be a little too dry but that just pure spiciness this is like one of the ultimate street snacks of all Middle East that one. you can just look at it and tell tell why it's very good 
kebab Kalau chicken bit Beef fry Yes, chicken Nothing can be Just tell it It's so good The dal is so thick it holds it together like peanut butter. Look at that bite. Oh, there it fell off. Again, it's almost too rich. You almost have to order like a second plate of white rice or a or a roti. Mm. Wow. That, the richness is incredible and you see how sticky it is. It sticks together almost like peanut butter. She's doing the lean. That chicken really is 10 out of 10. <laughs> So it just means chicken with tons of stuff. Songkeang. Or like decorated chicken. Mm. What it probably means is marinated chicken, but I'm going to try to get a few secrets as to why that dish is unbelievable. Best dish on the table. If you see that dish when you come here, you got to order that first. Mm. They made the chicken family proud. What a comment. Yeah, we're proud of them. That might be going in the video title. <laughs> Like Isn't that really good? The shrimp? Shrimp is the best. That shrimp is good though. You mm. Lee won't admit anything else is good compared to that chicken, which. Yeah. Okay. You should let me eat the shrimp before chicken. After chicken, obviously, just mm. on the behind level. ลูกครับถามได้มั้ยครับไก่สองเครื่องไก่ไหนไหนเครื่องมีอะไรมั้งครับอร่อยที่สุดครับเขาเขาบอกว่า 10 Okay, there's a bit of the advice straight from Lung himself. So it is a uh, two brothers actually who are who are taking care of. Oh, they have an unbelievable menu here. So that also speaks well of this restaurant. It also shows you how unique this is because honestly, for my recommendations for just Southeast food, Southeast Asian food in general, you want kind of the one restaurant, one dish because you want a family that specializes just in that one dish. So four dishes here that are amazing. And, and we didn't even order mataba. We did not even order, they have smoothies. Oh, we're gonna order tea. After the richness of this, I was thinking, my brain is starting to slow down. We might even fall asleep here. We gotta have some tea to kind of get back going. The families here are so authentic. You see how they were smiling, just not even before I told them that that yes, I do have a YouTube channel. He was smiling so much that I spoke Thai, that I was interested in these dishes, because yeah, they're not, definitely do not look like Thai food. The things they have in the cabinets, you have to know kind of what you're ordering. Um, the menus here, that menu is in English, but it's only the basic dishes. All the other menus are in Thai. Also, here's another thing to look out for. When you see a street cart that has been incorporated into the restaurant, 
you know that they're successful. Why? Because that street card is the, the way that the business started. So they were out on the street just selling like a street card and they've done so well that now they've brought the street card and been able to afford an entire restaurant built around that original street card. So you gotta love how they pay, pay tribute to you know, where they came from and you gotta know that they're making the same dish that they got famous for in the first place. And this is just, this is a magical spot in Chiang Mai. You gotta check it out. Lai La, Kao Mo Kai Lai La. So chicken, biryani, Lai La. This is the third branch, but there are obviously two other branches to check out. That's the lady that I met first when I came to ask them the first time. She's so cool. Oh yeah, she's the one making the roti. How cool is it that with the hot big cup of milk tea also comes a hot green Green. You know what, it's probably black tea also, just very mild black tea. This makes me want like a, like a Thai donut to go with it. Or another roti. The way that smells can just transport you. This is a place of happiness all on its own, but even being transported Oh, that's perfect. That's perfect. I like some sweetness to tea, especially after the meal. I thought you paid already. I heard her talking about that. ตอนที่กินโอเคอันตรายใจครับเท่าไหร่ครับโอ้โอ้ตอนที่ยังไม่ได้ยังไงโอเคอันนี้เราไม่ต้องสุกอันเราจริงจังมากนะฮะเท่